we are going to go over acrylic painting techniques today and you're going to need a 9 by 12 inch paper you can use the one in your sketchbook or otherwise and you're going to divide it into eight even sections using a ruler to help you after making all your lines you should have something that looks like this starting in the upper left hand corner let's label our techniques we have wash glazing layering dry brush scumbling palette knife impasto, soft and hard edges, and sgraffito. If you haven't already, grab some palette paper and a palette. Take a piece of palette paper, put it on top of your palette, and secure it on four sides with a little bit of blue tape. Make sure that the glossy side of the palette paper is facing up. Grab a medium-sized acrylic paintbrush that has the green handle paper towel, a cup of water, and an apron. Remember that as we're painting today, use the long side of your palette to set up all of your colors. Follow along with the colors and the imagery that I'm using so that we're all on the same page here and you're really getting the most out of each technique. I'm going to use three colors to keep our lives simple. We're going to use the primary colors since that way we can do everything with them. So some blue, some red or magenta, and some yellow. It doesn't matter if you use the deep yellow or the lighter yellow, but just choose a yellow that you like. Then we are going to start with our wash. So when we talk about washes, this might sound like what we did with watercolor, and it is. that We're taking the acrylic paint, adding just a little bit of water to it to loosen up the consistency. This allows us to have a translucent wash, which allows either colors underneath it or the white of our paper or canvas to show through. Washes are especially good when you are starting off your painting, planning things out, trying to mark in the values, see where things go and work out your colors. Whether you're working with acrylic paint or with oil paint, you always want to go from thin to thick putting your thinnest layers of paint down first and then building up the viscosity and the texture on your canvas or paper. So just play around with the different consistencies of the washes that you can get. What happens if you have a little bit more paint? What happens if you have a little bit more water? What happens if you make strokes going vertically and horizontally? See what kind of effect you can achieve just with washes. Now we're going to move on to glazing and layering. So with glazing and layering, essentially it is what happens when you put two washes together on top of one another. So to demonstrate this, I want to start off by creating a couple of thin layers of paint in different colors so then that way I can let them dry and see what happens when I put another color on top. And with glazing, when you think of a glaze, you think of something sort of um, creamy or almost misty like a glazed donut, right? So you can see through it, but it's a little bit foggy. And that's the effect that you're going to get with a color. You'll have the other color sort of beaming through, but it's just an undertone. So I'm just going to start off by making this sort of chartreuse color. And then I'm going to take a little bit of a blue-green and make a thin wash there. Just making a couple of rectangles to get a set up. Unless you are working in an a la prima style, which means that from start to finish you are completing a painting in one sitting, layering is going to be a big part of adding depth, richness, texture to any painting that you're working on. So while glazing is more about luminosity and building up layers of color, um, layering I would say is a more general umbrella term for putting down several layers of paint. Doesn't mean that they're necessarily thin. 
So I've taken this purple and I'm putting it over my blue green. And you can see that in the area where they overlap, we're getting this sort of deeper blue color, which is really beautiful and really pretty. And now I'm mixing a slightly darker green by adding a little bit of blue. And I'm going to put that over my yellow green to see what happens when I put the darker green over the yellow green and how that makes a difference versus when I just put the color down on white. It's really subtle, but you can see that the yellow green is beaming through or sort of glowing through the darker green paint, which just adds a lot of depth and complexity. Spend the remaining time in this rectangle, picking up a few other colors and layering and glazing. Our next technique is called dry brush and for the sake of showing you the full potential of the technique, I'm actually going to start off by making a wash and putting that down and letting it dry first. Then we are going to layer dry brush on top. So dry brush is exactly what it sounds like. You want a completely dry brush dipping that into paint and then you are making texture with your brush utilizing the coarseness of the bristles to create that effect. So start off by making your wash, rinsing off your paintbrush, and then I'm going to go in and pick up some yellow paint and show you what that texture looks like. So I'm just sort of lightly skirting the surface of my paper and making this sort of zigzag pattern should make a little noise. It should sound like the brush is sort of dancing on top of the paper. Um, and if you're finding that you're not getting that effect, maybe you have too much paint on your brush. So just sort of skirt around, see what happens if you blend one color into another color. I'm going with kind of a flamey feeling here. So that's where, that's where I'm going with this. And you're welcome to follow along or add in some different colors. So what I'm doing now is mixing a brown. So I'm using my red, my yellow, and my blue together to make a brown. And I'm going to do that same texture um, less zigzag and perhaps more just plop, 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 dab, dab, dab to make kind of a sand, gravelly, small rock texture over the wash that I'm using. Play around with using the entire um, edge of the brush or maybe just using the corner. What happens if it's oriented vertically versus horizontally versus diagonally and just build up the texture here. You can see how you can use this technique to capture sand, to capture leaves, rocks, clouds if you had white paint. It's really super useful, particularly when combined with a wash.
to make this scene feel a little bit more complete, I'm gonna finish it with a wash in the background. Here again, really just emphasizing the difference between soft and hard, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about later. Scumbling is our next technique, and it's similar to dry brush in the sense that you're making a texture. It's more of a swirling texture, though, um, that's specific to scumbling, but you don't necessarily have to do it with a dry brush. You could do it with a dry brush, but you can also do it with a wash. It's really more about the circular motion of your brush. It's great for blending in. If you need to sort of blend in something, blend in a shadow or blend in a highlight. Right now I'm going for sort of a water feeling, so I'm just using some of the blue-green tone that I already had, playing around with having washes that have more paint, having uh, washes that have less paint and just layering those making small and big circles to build up this kind of river ocean body of water scene. Something that I think is really cool about painting water and just painting in general is that water is not just blue. What happens when you add some yellow into your blue, some red into your blue, or having those mixes next to pure blue, how that's going to seem so much more multidimensional. So really playing around, even though we're just doing techniques, taking advantage of the entire rectangle to take some risks and try some things that maybe seem less obvious to you. I'm committing to a beach, so I'm gonna have some little yellow sands in the background. Again, continuing with my scumbling technique. I've added some brown into my yellow to make it feel a little bit more muted. And then just for funsies, I'm gonna put in a tiny little umbrella because I can, and it's just kind of fun. Palette knives are not just for mixing paint, but they're also for painting. And you can take a palette knife and pick up a big wad of paint and just sort of drag it over the surface of your paper. And you're gonna see that some areas are thicker, some areas are thinner, depending on the direction and what colors you pick up on your knife. You're really gonna get some kind of cool, unexpected, surprising outcomes. I think that palette knives are really, really nice for adding in backgrounds or quickly getting in a lot of color. And smaller palette knives are really good for painting. I really went through a time where I only used palette knives. I didn't use any brushes because I just love them so much. There's something really satisfying about picking up the paint with a knife and just dragging it across the surface uh, your, of your picture plane. Impasto refers to painting with thick layers of paint. And you can do this with a palette knife or you can do it with a brush. So either one is fine. Um, and to show you that impasto isn't just for painting abstractly, let's go back to a basic geometric form, a good old faithful, our little cone here. So I'm just gonna lightly draw a cone. Let's just decide that our light source is on the left-hand side. And I'm gonna mix some purple with my palette knife. And I wanna mix, you know, a pretty healthy amount because I'm going to be sort of smearing it thickly applying it onto my cone here, right? So just crudely putting it in. And 
And again, you don't want to smooth it out. You don't want it to be flat. You want to be accentuating the texture of the paint. So you can try part of this with palette knife. If you're not feeling the palette knife, you can switch to a brush. And you just want enough paint on your brush that you are maintaining that texture and really moving the paint around. Kind of working the blues and the purples here and then I also want to go ahead and put in a background just to really finish this but you can see how the impasto texture just gives a totally different feeling than the washes for example or the dry brush it really gives a super rich feeling Soft and hard edges are less maybe a technique than it is just something to be aware of. So a hard edge is exactly what it sounds like. You put down a stroke of paint and you have a really crisp edge of where the paint is versus where the paper is. And then with a soft edge, when you put it down, it's a little bit more blurred out. So it's not as crispy, you might say. The hard edges happen a lot more naturally and they're more likely to happen when you have more paint on your brush. For the soft edges, you kind of have to go back in and smooth things out and sort of fade it out so that it's blending into either the background or if you're, let's just say, trying to add in a shadow and you need to sort of blur it out, that would be a good example of using a hard edge. So I'm just going to kind of play around with the shape now for the rest of the time. I'm going to make um, this sort of trapezoid, this polygon, if you will, and then I'm going to have a hard edge and then I'm going to sort of play around with blurring some of the edges. So just take some time. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing um, to make a shape, try to get some really hard edges, and then practice blurring out some of those edges. Our last technique is called Scraffito, and Scraffito is used in ceramics a lot if you've taken a ceramics class as a surface design. But for painting, you put down a layer of paint, and then you take the end of your brush or something else that sort of has a hard edge, and you scratch into the surface to create this texture, so sort of carving in. Just play around with that, adding thick layers of paint, see what happens if you add thinner layers of paint, try some swirly sgraffito designs, try some dotted sgraffito designs, really think of different surface textures that you could add. <laughs> 